June 21st, 2023. Look at me, Cole says. Hey. Checking Miles' pupils, which are still huge, shock and fear, and the drugs working their way out of his system. Scrambling to remember her first aid training, checklist as life boy. He's able to focus, to speak without slurring. He was groggy in the car, getting away. But soon he'll be capable of asking difficult questions she's not ready to answer. About the blood on her shirt, for example. Hey, she says again, keeping her voice as even as she can. But she's shaky too, with the come down of adrenaline. Seeing Billy hauling his body like a broken punching bag, thinking he was dead. But he's not. He's alive. Her son is alive, and she needs to hold it together. It's going to be all right, she says. I love you. Love you too, he manages. An automatic call and response, like an invocation in church. Except their cathedral is an abandoned gas station restroom, where the rows of empty stalls gape like broken teeth in the pre-dawn light, toilet seats long since wrenched off by vandals. Miles is still shaking, his thin arms wrapped around his ribcage, shoulders hunched, teeth clicking like castanets, and his eyes keep jerking back to the door, which has been kicked in before this, judged by the scuffs and dents in the plywood. She, too, is expecting that door to burst open. It feels inevitable that they'll be found and dragged back. She'll be arrested. Miles will be taken away. In America, they steal kids from their parents. This was true even before all this. In the shards of mirror, her skin tone is grey. She looks terrible. She looks old. Worse, she looks scared. Cole doesn't want him to see that. Maybe that's what superheroes are concealing behind the masks. Not their secret identities, but the fact that they're scared shitless. The glassy blue tiles above the sink are broken into mosaic, the pipe half-wrenched from its mooring. But when she opens the faucet, it creaks and groans, and water sputters out. This is not blind luck. She spotted the water tank on the roof of the looted gas station store before she slid the car around the back and under the tattered shade cloth. Devon was always the organiser in the family, the planner but she has learned to live 30 seconds ahead of wherever they are, calculating all the possible trajectories. It's exhausting. Live in the moment was always a philosophy of luxury. And damn you, Devon, Cole thinks, for dying with the rest and leaving me to do this on my own. Two years later and you're still mad, Boo? She still hears her dead husband's teasing voice in her head. Her own homemade haunting. Lots of that going around these days. Better hope your sister doesn't join the ghost chorus. She splashes her face to banish the thought of Billy, the sickening sound of metal against bone. The cold water is a shock, the good kind, clarifying. She can feel all the guilt in the world later. Once they're out of here, once they're safe... She peels off her bloody shirt, stuffs it into one of the sanitary bins. It's seen worse gore than this. The mirror is a fragment of its former self, and in the reflection, the light glancing off the tiles makes her son's skin look beige. Coffee with too much cream. What did Billy give him? Benzos? Sleeping pills? She wishes she knew. She hopes the drugs were the kind that induce amnesia like wiping an Etch-a-Sketch clean. She rubs his back to warm him up, calm him down, both of them needing human contact. She knows him so well. The dent of his MMR vaccination, the white twist of a scar that runs up from his elbow, from when he broke his arm falling off the top bunk, the movie star notch on his chin, which he gets from her dad. Rest in peace, old man, she thinks on autopilot because she didn't get to say goodbye. And somewhere deep inside, Miles, the errant genes the virus couldn't latch on to. One in a million. No, that's not right. 
one of the million left in America.